two parts. What, what, what is the primary reason for change? There's, there always needs to be a good reason for change. In other words, there must be something with a status quo that is not delivering the results that we want. So, and when it comes to say, if we want to get these reasons for change to be as, as close to a business results as we can get it. Yes, individuals may need to uh, want to change because they are not happy about maybe the, the, um, the way they're behaving and that's okay, that's an individual behavior change. But when we're talking about change at the organization level, we should be thinking about what are the business results that we want to achieve from a customer perspective? And why do we want to get that rather than as a team, we want to create more output? Yes, output is important because output should lead to outcome. But if we don't have the outcome first, the output may be stuff that is not going to lead to the outcome that we're after. So we're going to be busy, we're going to be churning, and we're going to deliver lots of things, but they will not actually get us where we want to go. So that's why it's important to have that reason for change, to say, okay, what are the conditions that are leading us to want something different? And those conditions are typically things like we are not getting launching the solutions the products that we have to the market in a timely enough manner we are not innovating quick enough so we're not experimenting a lot to find out what the actual customer needs are rather than assuming that we know what the customer wants yes we build continuous discovery in and we've got our continuous exploration as part of safe framework and we execute on that but that needs focus to happen. So typically those are the things, you know, it's about time to market, quality could be a, also be a factor, but the two are linked. When time to market typically is long, organizations start to cut corners and one of the corners they cut is quality. So we move away from built-in quality to just let's get it out of the door. And that brings in, you know, a lot more failure demand and reasons for, for rework in the organization. But those are the reasons for change. And the next question is why, why quick start art launch? And a quick start art launch is, if you like, starts with the hard questions first. And one of the things that actually some organizations are, or our clients get, surprised about is that we ask them what are the business reasons you want to change and they find it difficult to articulate that or they sometimes also find it difficult why we're asking that we just want you here we're going to pay you just do what we uh, you know just just work and yes it's okay we, we are happy of course we uh, we are very happy to help our customers um, and and you know engage and get the revenue but that's not the model we have. The model we have is that we want to be able to show that we've made a difference. Yes, we can change the, the goalpost, if you like. That's not a problem. But we still need to have something to shoot for. And then as we go through, we, we learn and adapt and we can change. But just starting for the sake of starting may not lead us to where we want to be. Because we want to show on a daily, weekly basis that we are making a difference we are getting closer to the outcomes that we agreed to achieve and the safe start of quick start pro, uh, program actually enables us to do that in other words that's the first building block what are you shooting for how do we know that we are achieving that Is, is really about what are the business outcomes we're after? How do we know what are the success measures that will tell us that we are on the right path? What is the customer problem that we're trying to solve? What is that vision that we have for the solution or the product that we're building? What are the feature hypotheses that we have that will lead to this customer problem being addressed? And then getting training and um, the, the team and the team of agile teams so that they all know what is it we are working on what that 
the, the words, the terminology that we're using, the cadence of events, what is the purpose of each event, why we're having it, and what, what the sequ why the sequencing is the way it is. So people understand their roles. We guide and coach them about their role and how to do that effectively as we deliver solutions. So it's not just about training, it's about training and delivery. And that's basically, so once we've done the training is about, we now need to launch the Agile release train. So we would have fixed the launch date fairly early on as a forcing function to make sure everything else is, is, uh, is sort of working towards achieving that. Then we do the, the launch and it's about executing, if you like, getting, showing the people what these events are actually, how they are actually done, what should happen when, when people make mistakes, just be there to, to let them make mistakes, not stop them from making mistakes unless it's fatal. You know, you, you, you let people make the mistakes because that's how we learn. Reflecting on those, coming up with guidance on how to go and providing is effectively, let me show you, you watch, then you do, I watch, and then we guide you and then over to, uh, and then basically follow that process of I do, uh, I show you, then you do, I, I will uh, guide you and then get them into a state that within the execution of that PI, they have had enough ex uh, practice, guided practice, if you like, to allow them to be sustainable and achieve the goals on their own. Company decides that they want to have a quick start art launch. What what are the conditions that they should have? The first condition is to have that crystal clear reason for change. Why are we changing? What's the purpose? What is the goal that we want to achieve as a result of this agile release train launch? And put business results, in other words, money, pound signs, dollar signs, whatever currency unit you're using against it because it wants to be real. Just to say, we want more customers or we want happier customers, that's not gonna cut it. It's got to be real. You know, we put, we put real numbers on it, say so this is what we want to shift. And then that allows us to sort of say, okay, that's what we're focusing on, that's what we're going on. Can we achieve that in, in 10 weeks? You know, the 10 weeks that we're actually launching because 10 weeks is about preparing it and the next 10 weeks is about executing and delivering. Can we achieve that in 10 or 20 weeks? Probably not, most likely not. But unless you have those numbers, you will not have the right measures to tell us that we are potentially leading to those outcomes. So that's what we need. So those are the conditions that we need to have. We also need to make sure that the people that are wanting to go through this change, they actually want to go through this change and this change is not imposed on them. They understand the reason, they know the business context, they understand that yes, it is change and every change that we go through is uncomfortable. But you have the support and the guidance from the people who've done this, if you like, been through this path a number of times to help guide, to ensure that we get, we're setting ourselves up for success and we have a successful launch. start art launch program is the perfect place to start because it brings the combination of training consulting and coaching together and if you like it's just in time just enough just in time and you put the training into practice straight away so it's not like we're training you one month and two months later you're going to put it in practice no and also for the organizations to go through uh the art launch or let's say or any uh, change where there, there are new or um, you know events or the events that they can put within the other events that they have merge them together that takes time so the first thing to do one of the first things we do is sort of work together and get those schedule of events make sure that diary markers that are out there we got all the senior people and the team 
all know what the events are, what's the purpose of it. If there is already an event that does the same thing or similar, we're not going to create another event. We just sort of merge the two together. But if there needs to be a new event, absolutely we put a new event in. And, and that going through that, going and speaking with people, understanding what the current, if you like, because most organizations and most senior people in the organizations, you'll see that their calendar is back to back. You try and get 10 minutes in, there isn't. And it's just about sort of saying, okay, these are the purposes of, of, of the events within SAFE. And this is what will happen. And then with that insight saying, okay, what are the current, if you like, events that we have in our diaries that we either don't need anymore? And that might be a big leap for them to do, but they can say, okay, potentially, once we see these other events, these should go away. Because we can see that, you know, okay, we have one where somebody gives us a report, then there is another one to review. And then, well, in actual fact, we got the iteration review or we got the system demo, which shows us working solutions every two weeks. So that's the best way to, to understand progress rather than get reports that, that may or may not tell us what we want. But that's the purpose of the preparation side of things, you know, to understand what it is, what are the events, why do we need them? And if we already got events that, that have got the same intent, let's do them, make sure that we got clarity on those. Then the other thing about that is to sort of prepare ourselves. So what is the vision for the product? What's the customer problem we're trying to solve? What is that product vision that we have? What are the features that will deliver that? How do you write good features? What is a feature in safe terms? You know, it's, it's, it's a work item piece of work that yes, we can get feedback from the customer. In other words, we can have a dialogue with a customer and also it's size to easily fit within one PI. So what does that mean? You know, we, we don't know what that is. So that's, again, where the guidance comes in from us. We help them to sort of understand what does that mean? How do we write the features? And then for the teams, if, you, if they haven't had exposure to agile ways of working, say, okay, how do we slice features into stories? And what are the story slicing techniques that we use? And how do we get stories that, again, are easily deliverable within one iteration, which by default is two weeks? So those are, if you like, laying the foundations. Do we know what we're doing? Have we got everything? And then going through the actual program. Start art launch program will start with defining what is the problem we're trying to solve and what are the success measures which will tell us that we are on the right track to achieve those. With the measures, we will work on both leading and lagging measures. We will help the organization because we need to agree on it jointly and we need to understand. So leading measures are, if you like, um, measures that will tell us that we are on the right track. Uh, an example I use is if you want to lose weight, a lagging measure is my weight. Every time I go on a scale, it will show me what my weight is. And sometimes people say, okay, well, you can, you can weigh yourself more frequently. That becomes a leading measure. It doesn't really become a leading measure. A leading measure is going to be what are the behavior changes that I'm, I'm going through that will, are likely to lead to me leaving, uh, sorry, losing weight. So am I eating less, exercising more? So th that's a leading measure for me. So that will tell me that that's what, what's going on. In the context of work, it would be things like we know when we have too much work in progress, we get busy, but we are not effective. So we're not delivering work. We're not finishing stuff that we start. We start a lot of things, but we finish very few. So the change in behavior in there, for example, a leading measure would be, are we reducing the number of items we start? Are we reducing the, the uh, work in progress? And if we are, then that's more likely to lead to work getting done quicker. So that's, if you like, that's the first stage to say, what is the, uh, what are we shooting for? What are the results we're after? How do we know that we are on the right track? Define the leading and, and lagging measures. And one of the other things that we have to guide organizations at this stage is where people want to go after everything. 
you know, they say, well, we want to increase quality, we want to increase productivity, we want to reduce time to market, we want happier customers, we want happier staff, we want the office to be cleaner, we want better coffee and all that. So the problem with having too many things to shoot for is that you end up with nothing. So we have to then rein that in and say, okay, if you had to focus on one thing, what's the one thing that is so important that we must have in the bag? And that's the, the thing, again, that's what we help and guide organizations to say, okay, let's get that one focal point. We go after that. The others may happen. And if they don't, that's okay. But we need to go after one thing at a time. Let's get that this in the bag. Then we say, okay, what's the next thing we should for? And then we just carry on doing this. So that's about, if you like, the goal, the success measures, and then building that one of the other things that we need to have is building that measurement or scoreboard dashboard. So if you are in a game, you're playing in a game, but there is no scoreboard, you don't know whether you're winning or losing. You're playing for the sake of playing and, and that's fun and that's good, you keep fit. But as soon as you have a scoreboard, your behavior changes. So we also need to have that scoreboard for our agile release train. To say what's the scoreboard that tells us whether we're winning or losing. Again, that scoreboard cannot be very busy. We cannot have, you know, 60 measures out there because then it becomes confusing. What does that mean? Are we winning or losing? So we need two or three, a handful of measures that are also counterbalancing. So because what, one of the things we want to avoid is the usual things, you know, tell me what you're going to measure and I will, you know, change my behavior to meet that. So we want to say, okay, if we have a measure which says how quickly things are done, there should be another measure to say, is this the right thing to do? And has it got the right quality? So we balance the measures out. So it's not like, oh, we just move on one and then we, uh, we break everything else. So a small set of measures that is a dashboard that everybody can look at and sort of see whether they're, how we are moving towards achieving that goal. And of course, underneath those high level, top level measures, we will have the finer measures and everybody can drill in and have a look. But we want one which at a glance says, yes, things are moving in the right way, or no, it's going the wrong way. So we need to change the interventions that we are. The interventions we are making are not making the difference that we expect, or we might need to give them a bit more time for the effect to come in. But either way, we've got the measures that tell us, because you know, if you say, give it more time, okay, we give it another week, another two weeks is still nothing has changed. So we must do something different because we can't carry on doing the same thing and expecting better results. So that's, if you like, all I've spoken about here is about the measurement system and building that dashboard, which tells us that visual management system that tells us what, what we're gonna do. The next thing is gonna be about that problem that we're trying to solve for the customer. What is that problem we're trying to solve? What is our product vision? How can we create and craft a vision which is getting people excited? There is a sense of purpose behind it. And people are going to be excited to say, yes, I want to work in order to solve this problem for the customers. I'm going to get out of bed thinking, oh, yeah, that's something to shoot for. I'm going to go out there and do that. So that's the other thing to do. And uh, we, we've already talked about the calendar of events, making sure we've got diarized those things. And one of the things to do fairly early on is to fix the launch date. Because if you don't fix it fairly early on, like within the first few days a week, it will keep slipping. So we fix the date to say, we are gonna launch 10 weeks from now on this date. That becomes like a forcing function, if you like. So that focuses the minds for everyone say that's what we got to hit so that's something happens within the first week or maybe even before we even engage we can speak with a client and they kind of say yep yeah, that's a good time to go make sure we, got, we, we give ourselves enough time now we got our vision uh, for the product we understand the problem we are trying to solve we got our benefit hypothesis written there and then we're working on what are the minimum features that will tell us that we are, we are addressing the customer needs. And then we also will define the leading and lagging measures for the customer needs being met. 
So we know whether the product as a solution is going to meet the client needs. So we define those as well. Then it's about training the, the people in the art, the various roles. So the teams, and then we got specialist roles like the scrum masters, the product owner and product managers within, within the art. We're training those. And then we may or may not have an agile release train engineer. If we have it, we will train them. If we don't have it, we will have a candidate person or persons that will carry out that role. We will guide them through the, the, um, the launch so they, they see what that role is. They can behave the way we want uh, them to behave and we get the art ready to, to go and they are there to provide the guidance. So this is, if you like, is all about laying the foundations for ongoing success so far. So we know what we're doing. We know why we're doing it. We know what the measures are. We know what problem we're solving for our customers. We've trained our people. We're supporting them. And now we're launching. So what does that mean? Launching means that we start with a PI planning. And that starts with the business owners providing the, the business context to say, why are we doing this? What is the reason for the launch? What do we achieve? What what do we hope to achieve? So, it's, if you like that business executive address has got two elements. The one is a long range, and the other one is a short range. What are we going to achieve in the next two weeks, and why that is important for business? It's not about you have to achieve this. Is what would be nice to achieve because the teams will ultimately decide what is possible. But as a business owner, I can stand up and say. This is what I wish to achieve. You know, that's what we would like to happen at the end of the quarter. Then the product management team will run through the product vision. Why? What is the vision? What are the things we hope to achieve within this PI? And the teams will then go and do the PI planning, break those features down into stories, come up with the PI objectives. So they write the objectives to say these are the things. And the PI objectives, again, this is where the guidance comes in to say, how do we write objectives that are written in business language and the business owners can understand what we're shooting for. And that's a learning exercise. It's the first one we're doing, but that's that's what it is because this agile release train is the first launch that is doing it. Or it may be that you've done, uh, you've done a few PIs, but because you didn't quite go through this program and you cut some corners, it's time for you to do a relaunch following this, this method of launching and learning from it. So we get the PI objectives. PI planning is over. And then it's about, okay, now we got to um, start iteration. So every two weeks, we got to start the planning of it. What are we gonna achieve in this two weeks? What's realistic to achieve? The teams will tell us what is possible to achieve. The product owner will come in and say, these are the goal, you know, it would be good to achieve these things so that we can, by the end of two weeks, we will have these outcomes but the team will guide the product owner and the product owner will guide the team if you like is a two bi-directional flow and guidance that goes on in there the team decides what can be done and then together they will craft a, a, a iteration goal to say these are this is the outcome that we are shooting for then the, there's going to be the, the events the daily uh, daily standard so the team as, as a whole gets together to say, okay, what are, what are we shooting for? Effectively, what you're doing in there to say, this is the goal for this iteration. Are there anything that is going to get in the way? And if they're not getting in the way, so we, we, we start executing on, on the work items, the stories, and we get them delivered. And when we say we get them delivered, that means they are developed, they are tested, they're integrated and then we go to the next story and the next story and the next story. So that's daily, if you like, stand up that happens on a daily basis. And then at the end of the iteration, we have the, our iteration review, which is we inspecting the solution or product increment that we have here. Then we've got our iteration retrospective, which is about how we worked and how we can be better. And then we've got our uh, iteration retrospective, and then we are back into uh, iteration planning that we do. One of the other events that we have found and uh, that is useful to do is the backlog refinement. And that is both at the team level where the teams refine in backlog refinement or, or 
story refinement, all, all it, it is, is about, you know, making sure that the work is, first of all, we've got a shared understanding within the team of what it is, and is it something that easily fits within one iteration? If we don't, if we think it doesn't easily fit within one iteration, then we need to slice it, make it smaller so that it does. So that's the backlog refinement activity that we do. So that's at the team level. Now at the agile release train, which is the teams of teams, we also have a system demo, which shows the integrated work of all the teams that have been are working within this art. That's the demo that we do. And demo basically means that we have software that is deployed in our staging environment, which is production-like environment. We have our business owners that are coming in, seeing the investment that they're making in this agile release train. What is it leading to? They can see that increment that we have de de developed uh, and as a team of agile teams that, that is tested and then they're happy with it. And then the business owners and product managers, they say, yes, we are good with this. And that increment is then deployed into our production system. In safe, we decouple deployment from releasing. So although it's de de deployed into production system, that's not visible to our customers. So we can make it visible to our customers whenever we want. So that's, uh, if you like, those are the kind of events that we will be guiding the whole Agile release train and the individual um, um, roles, business owners, product owner, product managers, scrum masters. At the end of the PI, we have our Inspect and Adapt uh, event or workshop. And the purpose of the Inspect and Adapt, so we are doing inspection and adaptation every uh, iteration. So every two weeks, we are inspecting the, the product increment and saying, what can we do differently for it? And also we are doing our retrospective, which is inspecting the way we've worked and say, how can we do things better? So that's happening. But at the end of the PI, within the uh, inspect under that workshop. Now we are looking at, as a whole agile release train, what have we achieved? So the first part is to look at the, if you like, the solution increment that is being done. So that's our system demo, the PI system demo, as we call it. So we can see over the past 10 weeks, this is what we achieved. This is the working solution. We get guidance on that, we inspect that. Then we look at okay, what are the system-wide issues that are affecting our Agile release train, our teams of teams? What can we do to remove these impediments, if you like, and get better at delivering next iteration? So that's all, these are all part of the inspection of that workshop. We, we facilitate all of these events, the problem-solving events, inspection and adapt, iterations, PI planning, and their teams learn how to do these things and the importance of these event, events and why they are there. So this at high level is, if you like, the quick start art launch. 20 weeks worth of work delivered in 20 minutes, maybe. <laughs>